Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into Google Earth Engine to analyze drought and vegetation health using two powerful datasets. Modi's NDVI and Chirp's precipitation will calculate the Standardized Precipitation Index, or SPI, and see how it correlates with vegetation greenness. Whether you're a student, researcher, or just curious about remote sensing, stick around. This is going to be fun and educational. If you enjoy this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Let's get started. All right, here we are in the Google Earth Engine Code Editor. Before we jump into the code, let me give you the big picture. We're going to use Modi's satellite data to measure vegetation health with NDVI. That's the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index and CHIRPS data to calculate total precipitation over a few months. Then, we'll compute SPI to assess drought conditions and plot it against NDVI to see if there's a relationship. Oh, and we'll assume an area of interest, or AOI, Addis Ababa is already defined in this case, say, a region you've drawn on the map. Ready? Let's break it down. First up, we're loading the Modi's NDVI dataset, specifically Mod 13A2, version 061. This dataset gives us vegetation greenness every 16 days. Here, we filter it for May 2024, focusing on our area of interest with filter bounds. We select the NDVI band and take the mean across that month to smooth things out. Oh, and see this multiply? 0 0.0001? That's a scale factor because Modi's NDVI values are stored as integers, and we need them between 0 and 1 for easier interpretation. This will give us a single NDVI image for May 2024. Pretty cool, right? Next, we grab precipitation data from CHIRPS, which stands for Climate Hazards Group Infrared Precipitation with Station Data. It's daily rainfall data, and here we're filtering it from May to August 2023, a nice three-month window to capture seasonal trends. Again, we filter by our AOI, add a Sababa and select the precipitation band. Then, we use SUM to calculate the total rainfall over that period. This total precipitation is the foundation for our drought index, SPI, which we'll compute next. Now, let's calculate the standardized precipitation index, or SPI. This tells us how wet or dry a region is compared to its average. First, we compute the mean precipitation across our AOI using reduce region with a mean reducer. We set the scale to 5 kilometers and a high max pixels value to avoid errors. Then, we do the same for the standard deviation. Finally, SPI is calculated by subtracting the mean from total precipitation and dividing by the standard deviation. Positive SPI means wetter than average. Negative means drier. This is a classic way to monitor drought. Super useful for climate studies. Step 4. Visualization. Time to see our results. We define visualization parameters for SPI with a color palette from red dry to blue wet, ranging from minus 2 to 2. For NDVI, we go from brown low vegetation to green healthy between 0 and 1. Then, we center the map on our AOI at zoom level 10 and add both layers with map.add layer. The clip function ensures they only show within our region. Run this and boom! You've got a drought and vegetation map right in front of you. But we're not stopping there. Let's sample 500 points across our AOI to compare SPI and NDVI. We combine the two layers with ad bands, then use sample at a 1 kilometer scale to keep things manageable. We create a table with SPI and NDVI values for each point. Finally, we make a scatter plot using UI chart. The x axis is SPI, the y axis is NDVI, and we add a red trend line to check for correlation. If NDVI increases with SPI, it suggests rainfall boosts vegetation logical, right? Hit run, and you'll see the chart pop up. So what do these results mean? On the map, 
Red areas in the SPI layer indicate drought, while blue shows wetter conditions. The NDVI layer shows vegetation health. Green is thriving, brown is struggling. In the scatter plot, if you see points trending upward with the red line, it means more rain, higher SPI, correlates with healthier vegetation, higher NDVI, a flat or scattered trend. Maybe vegetation here isn't as rain dependent could be irrigated farmland or a desert ecosystem. This kind of analysis is gold for real-world applications. Farmers can use it to predict crop yields, governments can monitor drought risk and plan water management, and researchers can study climate change impacts on ecosystems. You could even tweak this code to track deforestation or wildfire recovery. The possibilities are endless. And there you have it. We've loaded satellite data, calculated SPI for drought, mapped NDVI for vegetation, and explored their relationship, all in Google Earth Engine. This is just the start. You could tweak the dates, adjust the AOI, or even export the data for deeper analysis. Now it's your turn. Grab this code from the description below, head over to Google Earth Engine, and try it out with your own area of interest. Did you spot a cool correlation between SPI and NDVI? Drop your results in the comments. I'd love to see what you find. And if you want more remote sensing tutorials like this, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss an update. Let's keep exploring the planet together. See you in the next video.